The opening ceremony for this year's Olympics in Tokyo is just days away. And what people heard globally was that it's okay that the Olympics are gonna take place. We don't need any more disruptions or any more postponement because they have a foolproof method of preventing athletes and people in general from contracting the virus. This will not in any way be a super spreader event. But before the Olympics have even started, we already have several athletes testing positive for coronavirus. They have either been quarantined or they won't be able to participate. So players Thabiso Monien and Komohelo Maltat. Malazzi um, are the first athletes to test positive while staying at the Olympic Village, uh, which has been set up as a bubble in hopes of preventing the spread of disease among 11,000 people traveling from around the world to compete in the games. Uh, do we have any video on this story? No, okay, that's wonderful, that's great. So anyway, Francesca, let's just have a vague conversation about this. Uh, obviously, there's still a global pandemic. Uh, we have variants now that are easy to spread, like Del the Delta variant. We also have a situation in which the Olympic Games are being held in a country that has low vaccination rates. So who are they trying to fool here? Who are they trying to fool? I mean, the plug should have been pulled a long time ago, right? I mean, and I know that was it was postponed, but but you gotta cut your losses, Tokyo. Like you're gonna, it's it's okay. You just cut your losses. Do it another time. Do you gotta have a do over, and then then all the sponsors can come in. But it's sad that like, especially these um, players, which anyone who believes that perfectly healthy people can't get COVID, let them be proven wrong by. The Olympian athletes who are currently getting and suffering from COVID, like everyone can get this virus, including the the strongest, the fastest uh, among us. But yeah, we saw this from a mile away, and it's sad because look, I like the Olympics, uh, I love gymnastics, I'm I'm excited to watch, but like I don't think that at the expense of spreading this even more. I mean, girl, if Coachella was canceled two years in a row, mm-hmm. The Olympics can be canceled as well two years in a row. So let's talk about why the Olympics are taking place. Because the people of Japan have been protesting this. They do not think the Olympics should take place. This has been an incredibly expensive endeavor for Japan. And in fact, any country that wins the, the bid to host the Olympics ends up spending so much money um, that, you know, just Kind of goes down the drain. It's not like they get a return on that investment, but you know, there's a lot of pride in being able to host the event. Now, the governing body for the Olympics wants to make sure that it moves forward because it's actually very profitable for them. They get to license the rights to broadcast the Olympic Games. That earns quite a bit of money for them. There, there are all these opportunities for you know the Olympic body, the governing body, to make money. Mm -hmm. And even if it's to the detriment of the people living in the local area, even if it harms actual athletes who are part of the Olympic Games due to this global pandemic, it doesn't matter. There's money involved. You know, people are gonna uh, strike it rich with these licensing deals and what what other deals they can um, you know pull out of this event. And it, it, it's the ongoing theme that we've been talking about on the show, right? The the theme of profits over people, profits over the well being of people, right? And in this case, profits over the health of the very athletes who are showing up to compete. And yeah, they can sit, they can talk about the bubble, they could talk about what they're trying to do to prevent the, the spread of COVID. But as we know, and as we've experienced on a personal level, right? Those efforts only go so far, you can't prevent the spread unless you ensure that people are distanced. Uh, and masked up, you know, the, one of the videos that I wanted to show you guys um, talked about the low vaccination rates in Japan, yes. But also the fact that like not everyone is masked, not everyone is taking the guidelines seriously. You know, it's not just the United States that has its issues with people not wanting to take it seriously. They have the same problem in, in Japan, not to the same extent, but they still have the same problem in Japan as well. So to pretend like, oh, COVID, we've, we've conquered this, everything is totally fine. I mean. We really want to make some money here, but everything's totally fine. Let's move forward. Like it's just 
let's call it what it is. This is about making money. This isn't about, oh, we love the Olympics and we love these athletes and we love watching these games and these competitions. No, it's there's a profit motive behind it. I mean, look, it's been that's been going on throughout, you know, whether it's MLB, NBA, like it, sporting events have been canceled because of COVID. And I would say that that a lot of these institutions have risked their players health and the fans health. Um, and they've tried I mean, like, it's like, you see the hoops they go through because there's so much money in sports, right? There's so much of it. And, and it's sort of revealing that you're like, Okay, but when push comes to shove, we're all gonna shut down, right? Right? And it's like, well, kind of, you know, we're definitely gonna keep on spreading it. And it's, you know, some people will die, maybe not the players themselves right now, but event, you know, the spread is gonna keep on happening. So it's interesting to see what we will and what we won't cancel. And sports are just one of those like carve outs where it's like, no, like we can, we just give us that, you know. Look, uh, Karl Marx said that uh, sports are the opium of the masses, or maybe it was Noam Chomsky. It was Noam Chomsky. You know, it's <laughs> the same guy ultimately. I think Chomsky said sports were the opium of the masses, or no, Marx said religion. You guys, oh my God, communists in the comments section are gonna hate me. <laughs> it's okay. Let's get off it. Let's get off it. Let's get off. Religion it. is the opium of the masses, but also sports. I think Chomsky said were the opium of the masses. But yeah, look. All last thing, last point. Shakari Richardson. Bless you, cause you dodged a bullet there, girl. Uh, for you know, getting booted from your team for smoking weed. I feel like you know her grandma just sort of worked some magic or something and was like, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna curse the games because of that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just so many stories are coming out of the Olympics already that make me really fearful about LA hosting the Olympics because they also oh, want to bid. And I mean. Have you guys seen what LA looks like right now? There's garbage everywhere. There are people living in tent cities, not just in one area of LA, all throughout LA. Because poverty is real. It isn't actually being addressed the way that it's supposed to be addressed. And the idea of LA County spending possibly billions of dollars to host the Olympics as its own people are dying on the streets is just absolutely disgusting. It's disgusting. And keep in mind the countries or the municipalities that hold the Olympics that carry the event don't turn a profit. They actually lose money to do it because it's all about it's like it's a genital measuring contest. Okay, mm -hmm, that's all it is. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. So it'll, it might hurt the local economy. It might hurt the locals living in the area where the Olympics are hosted, but who cares? Who cares? The governing body for the Olympics stands to make a profit and these specific areas want to look good by hosting events that they have no business hosting. It's like someone who just went, went bankrupt hosting like a mansion party. Like what are you doing? <laughs> well, and that's the thing, Anna, like what do you think is gonna happen to the unhoused people in living in Los Angeles before the Olympics? Hide them, we so gotta hide them. Are they gonna, right exactly, that's, you that's gotta hide them somewhere. Are they gonna be given homes? <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, it's just one way ticket. I mean, New York did this have about a one way ticket just out of town. Watch that happens. It happened in Beijing. Do you remember there were sort of so called cleaning up, but basically displacing hundreds of thousands of families who lived in traditional neighborhoods in Beijing to make way for the Olympics that year. And it happens, it happened in Brazil for the World Cup. You know, and then I'm sure everyone saw the photos of these new brand new stadiums that got built that were just full of like trash and seagulls six months later. And it, they say, oh, we're just gonna make this town good for business. No, that's not how you build a healthy town. Business has been here and they've been destroying the fabric of this city. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.